God is good. And all the time. Amen. What a great crowd. If you're glad to be here today, say thank you, Lord. If you're glad to be sitting next to the person you're sitting to, say amen. If they didn't say anything, you may want to consider sitting somewhere else next week. <laughs> if you can bear to listen to me, I'm going to bring a message to you this morning. I have what they call all up in this region up in here, I've got what they call Southeast Texas. So you bear with me in the way I sound this morning. We're looking forward to hearing from God. Amen. Amen. I know the bulletin gives you a scripture, but I'm going to get you, if you want to turn, to Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3, and today we're talking about heartburn. Anybody here ever had any heartburn? Amen. How many of you found out that the older you get, the more often you have heartburn? Isn't that the truth? Amen. Today we're talking about heartburn. It comes out of Revelations chapter 3, verse 15. Say amen if you're there. He says, I know your works. I know that you're neither cold nor hot. And I could wish that you were cold or hot, so then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I think the King James Version says, I would spew you out of my mouth. The New King James says, makes it a little more graphic, I will vomit you out of my mouth. So may we understand immediately going right into this message today to be in a lukewarm status is a very dangerous thing to be with God. May we not be lukewarm. Today I'm talking about a spiritual heartburn for Jesus. A heartburn that we just are excited about the Lord. We're excited about what the Lord not only has done for us, but what the Lord can do for other people. A real burning desire to bring our spiritual relationship that we have with Lord to the next level. Say next level. Maybe a place we've never been before. Maybe we have been somewhere before. Someone used to say, well, what is a backslidden condition? And I think the way to describe a backslidden condition is if you ever in your whole Christian life been at a place that you were closer to the Lord than you are today? And if the answer is yes, then we are in a backslidden condition. We have slidden back from where we once were. There may have been a time that we prayed more fervently than we pray now. We read the Word with more passion than we have read the Word with now. We share the good news of Jesus with people like, maybe we've not shared in a long time. And so I ask you, if you, if you want to have that heart-burning desire to live for the Lord, to walk with the Lord, to bring that to the next level, I'm talking about transferring from Sunday Christianity to weekly people of God. Say amen. amen. Now, I want you to know this morning, you look around in this room, it's easy to be a Christian this morning. It's easy to be a Christian this morning. I'm talking about a relationship with Christ where we walk like we've never walked. We talk like we've never talked. We have vision and ability and a power like we've never had. A Holy Spirit in filling that lets us speak the word of God with boldness that we are unashamed. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, it says, Now Pashur, son of Emir, the priest in charge of the temple of the Lord, heard what Jeremiah was saying, heard what Jeremiah was prophesying. And it, Jeremiah, it says in the next verse 2, so Pashur arrested Jeremiah, the prophet, and had him beaten and put in stocks at the Benjamin gate of the Lord's temple. Quite the price to pay for your heart to be burning for the Lord. 
I don't know what it's going to look like as we're teaching a, 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 a lesson on Wednesday nights on the end of times. I can't tell you exactly what it's going to look like, but I will tell you that the closer we get to the end of times, the more the world is going to reject the message of Christ. And here, even in this day, Jeremiah was prophesying about all the goodness of God. And Pashur, the guy over the temple, didn't like it and he arrested him. And then we hear Jeremiah saying in prison that these messages from the Lord have made me a, a household joke. It's cost me so much. It's cost me a beating. It's, he says, but if, if I can agree, verse 9, that if I'll never mention the Lord, or never speak his name, all of this would go away. I want you to know today, church, that it's easy to remain silent. But if there's ever a time the church did not need to be silent, it is today we must speak the things of God in our lives. We must speak the blessings of the Lord. We must speak the power of the Lord. And he says right here that Jeremiah said, if I would just stop, never mention the Lord's name again. It says in verse 9, which is where we get the title of this message, he says, but his words burn in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones, Jeremiah says. He says, I'm worn out trying to hold it in, and I can't do it. Jeremiah said, I'm on fire for Jesus. I can't help but speak his word. Church, say amen. Amen. May we have that kind of fire. May we have that kind of zeal. May we have that kind of relationship with the Lord that every opportunity get, we're speaking about the Lord. We're sharing with people the good news of Jesus Christ. We're talking about the blessings. Oh, there's some people who aren't going to like it. Jeremiah said in verse 10, I have heard the rumors about me. They call me the man who lives in terror. They threaten me, even say that, that, that if I say anything else about the Lord, they're going to report me. He said, even my friends are watching me, waiting for me to slip up. And he said something beautiful in verse 11, and may you hold on to this today. He said, but the Lord stands by me like a great warrior, church. Say amen. Amen. I want you to know that not everybody's going to like what the pastor does. Not everybody's going to like what the elders do. Not everybody's going to like what the lay pastors do. Not everybody's going to like what you do. But I'm going to tell you this, as long as we're moving forward in the spirit of the Lord and in his walk and in his will, the Lord is going to stand by our side. Say amen. Amen. We just need to keep moving forward. I I believe this, and I hear it a lot from the Lord when I pray. He just says, Harlan, just stay out of my way and let me use you like I'm using you. You see, so many times we want to tell the Lord how to do his work. We want to tell the Lord, here's what we need, and here's how we need you to do it. No, the Lord just says, I will be with you like a warrior. And, And we talked about last week about prayer and singing, but actually Jeremiah here says at the end of this verse, around verse 13 or 14, I will sing unto the Lord, I will praise the Lord, for though I was poor and though I was needy, he rescued me from my oppressors. Look at your neighbor say, you're not always going to like what I do. Amen. Amen. You see, today many Christians are spiritually stirred up. Oh, there's an excitement at CCOC that I'm loving. Would you say amen? But a lot of Christians are spiritually stirred up on Sunday but not changed on Monday. And so I'm not talking about just getting excited. And I like to get excited. You can't get too excited. For, we've yet to have a service that I think, well, that went a little too far on excitement. <laughs> I can't get too excited. I love it. But listen to me. We often engage. We often engage in spiritual excitement without a spiritual experience. And there's a difference. You and I, in our excitement, must also be having an experience. You see, today I'm not looking for excitement. I'm looking for an experience. Say amen. I'm looking for an experience in Jesus Christ. You know, excitement, excitement will last. Excitement's good. Excitement's good. And I, 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 I had to hold back when they started on, on the Cajun tune. 
I had to hold back. A lot of it was because I was afraid I couldn't breathe all up in here if I did it. But here's what I want to give you. Excitement will last until church is over and you're on your way to go eat somewhere and somebody cuts you off in traffic. Then you're going to show the real you. <laughs> Amen. You see, excitement's good, but let me tell you what experience will do. Or even better than that, what's that, that place that we like to go eat in the buffet and the line's always real long? Roberts. I've seen some churchy folk get smooth out of the way when somebody breaks in that line. <laughs> we left church saying hallelujah to somebody breaks in that line that I don't think so. <laughs> Amen. You see, excitement is good. You laugh for a reason. <laughs> excitement is good, but we have to have experience. How many of you have ever had something happen in your life, and it was like deja vu? That thing had happened before, and it might even happened before, and it might even happened before, but you seem to always handle it the same way. And then suddenly, as D and I have been married for 140 something years now is that something will happen in our life now and we respond to it completely different than maybe that same event that would have happened a year ago see experience see experience allows us to handle some things differently good music good preaching can create excitement but it takes confession say confession to have an experience. Good music and good preaching can create excitement, but it takes surrender, say surrender, to have a good experience. It takes commitment to have an experience. It takes these things, this confession, this surrender, this commitment, this excitement is great, but we have to take this to a new level. I, I want to give you some news today that bothers me when I say it, but I say it to you in love is that the devil is completely comfortable with an excited church. He is comfortable with an excited church. But oh, let me tell you, the red flashing lights go off in hell and the demons are warned when they move that thing from excited church to a church that's experiencing God. We need an experience. Jeremiah said, the word burns in my heart like a fire. It's like fire to my bones. And I tell you, the first point this morning is that for you to have a spiritual heart burn, you must begin to love and desire the word of God like you've never desired it before. I want to encourage you. I'm, I'm going to pause here. This isn't in my notes. I want to encourage you that if you've been baptized uh, Amy's not here today, but it's somewhere around 102 now, 103, that's been baptized in the last 14 months. If you've been baptized, you need to sign up for that new converts class. I encourage you to do it. And if, if you need to grow in the Lord, and we all need to grow in the Lord, I want you to sign up for Laverne's discipleship class. We, we need, say, more word. We need more word in our life, and our church is offering that to you. I hope you'll take advantage to it. But let's look at Luke 24. I think that was in your bulletin. Luke chapter 24, verse 13 through 29. That very first thing today is that experience, to experience, to experience the Lord means we're going to desire and love more of that word. We have in verse 13, now behold, two of them were traveling that same day. It's the road to Emmaus. To a village called Emmaus, which is seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. He said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another? You walk and you are sad. And then one of those whose names was Cleophas answered and said unto him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And Jesus said unto them, What things? And so they said unto him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who is a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he 
who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this day, and I love this, it's the third day since these things happened. And we know what happened three days after Jesus was put in the tomb. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, may you today be desiring a third day experience with Jesus Christ. A third day experience. He says, yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And then he said unto them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe, all the prophets had spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them and all the scriptures and the blessings concerning him. Then verse 28 says something that leads us to our second point. It says, they drew near to the village that they were going, and he, being Jesus, indicated that he would have gone farther. But verse 29 says, but they constrained him and said, abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is spent, and he went and stayed with them. May I tell you today that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. God is a gentleman. The Lord is a gentleman. He is not going to force himself on you. If you and I want to take our spiritual life to a whole new level, that's going to require you and I to make an invitation to God. You want more? Ask for more. You desire more, ask for more. He says, knock, seek, find. Amen? So in our relationship to Christ, they invited him in. You see, number two, it takes an invitation for you and I to grow to the next level where our heart is burning. Here, let me give you some invitations in the Word. It's uh, out of Romans. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Revelations 3, 20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and what? Opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. It's an invitation. You and I want to go to the next level, we invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. We want to go to the next level, we invite the Lord to be our Savior. I heard this the other day and I liked it a lot. It was from a, a, a guy that I, I know that I'm real good friends with. He said this, I'm going to quote his quote it. He said, a new experience will come with dedication. Say dedication. That will manifest a consecration. Say consecration. Giving birth to reconciliation. Say reconciliation. That will produce an offspring of transformation in your life. There are some things that if you and I open up to God, open up to the Holy Spirit, there will be some changes that take place in our life, but it's all about that commitment to do so. It's all about that willingness to do so. It's all about that desire. I desire more. I remember the very first time that I met Denise. She was 16 years old. And they came out of the girls' high school Sunday school class. And she had on this little flowery sundress. And she had on these big old high platform cork shoes, I call them. And it's like when I saw her come out of that class, it was the first time I'd ever seen her. It was like the heavens suddenly opened up. I felt a breeze blow across my face, and I heard the holy angels sing, there she comes, just a walking down the street, singing. It's what I heard. My little heart was going, and look, I wanted to know her better. I wanted to know her more. I was excited about what I saw, but I wanted an experience. Say amen. amen. 42 years later, we still have experiences. You and I need to take our relationship to Christ from excitement to experience. 
when those guys got through eating with the Lord, they said in verse 32, did our heart burn within us while he talked to us? Did our hearts not burn within us when he walked with us on the road to Emmaus? Did our hearts not burn when he let us know how much that he loved us? Did our hearts not burn as he broke bread with us and we dined with him and he dined with us? Is your heart burning for him today? Do you desire more of him than you've ever had before? Today he's calling you to a closer walk, to a closer relationship than what you have right now. On a Thursday night Bible study that I teach, I've been sharing this with my students. May each of us every week pray, Lord, show me something in my life that you're not happy with that right now I'm not even aware that you're not. Show me a sin in my life, Lord, that right now I don't even recognize it as sin. Because listen to me, do you know that the only thing that you and I is confessing is what we see as sin? Oh, may we take that relationship to a new level and say, Lord, show me, show me. to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my
joy we share as we tarry there. seated we got some folks to baptize in Jesus name